What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys the latest and greatest with the biggest update today when it comes to Cinema 4D to Unreal Engine integration. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So starting off, this literally just came out today. Today's December 2nd, 2021. And this is the article that came out showing the integration now with the new Cineware plugin for Unreal Engine. And so I'll link this down below so you guys can come to this page and kind of read through the marketing yourself but you can see right here we have all the new features listed in which i'll show you guys everything in this example here and to get started what you're going to need to do is actually come to this page that has a cinemaware for unreal engine so in order for this to work you need to at least have cinema 4d 24 or 25 and then for unreal engine we need to have 4.27 so moving on down here you'll actually come down to here where it says the cinemaware plugin you're just going to click this download button and then whenever you download it let me show you exactly where we need to put it in our folder structure and i'll also leave this link down below as well so you guys can find it but let me come down here to my file explorer and then i'm going to come over to my download folder so you'll have a zip file which i already downloaded it earlier but this is the folder that you'll get somewhere for unreal and then i'm going to come over to where i have cinema 4d installed at on my c drive so i'm going to come over here to program files and then come down here to epic games and then I want this one right here, UE underscore 4.27. And then I want to come over to engines and then come down to plugins. And then we should have one that says marketplace right here. So I'm going to click on this marketplace folder. And this is where we're going to want to drag it into. So I'm going to come back over to my download folder where I downloaded it originally. I'm going to double click on this. And then within that folder, we see another folder that says Cineware for Unreal Engine. So I'm going to actually hold down the left control on my keyboard, just left click and drag that into my marketplace folder. And that's going to make a copy for us here. So we should be good there. So if you double click on it, you can see that we have everything inside of our folder here. So I can actually close these out now. And then I'm going to actually come down here to Cinema 4D. I'm using version 25 and I'm going to get these set up. But before that, I'm actually going to open up my Epic Games Launcher and get Unreal Engine loaded up as well. So once I'm inside my Epic Games Launcher, I'm just gonna come over to library here. And then this is the version that we're gonna to wanna to use right here, version 4.27.1, which is the latest. And so I'm just gonna hit launch on here. And this is gonna get Unreal Engine opened up here. And once this opens up for my Unreal Project Browser, I'm just gonna to go to Film, Television, and Live Events. I'm gonna click Next. And then I'm just gonna start with a blank slate here. I'm gonna click Next again. And then I'm going to actually put it on my desktop. I have a folder there already. So let me select my location, my desktop, my UE folder, select folder. And then down here, I'm just going to leave it at my project. That should be fine. I could turn on ray tracing right here. And then I'm going to hit create project. And here we are. We're inside of Unreal Engine. But I'm going to actually come down here. I'm going to click on manage plugins. And then once this plugin window pops up, I'm actually going to type in C-I-N-E for Cineware, and it should already be enabled. So now we actually have two plugins. We have the Cineware for Unreal Engine. It should be enabled already. And then we also have the Datasmith C4D importer that's enabled as well. It's no longer in beta, as you can see, it's version one, which is really cool. And so before previously, we only had the Datasmith plugin. That's how we import our stuff from Cinema 4D into Unreal. But now with the Cineware plugin, we can actually make changes in Unreal Engine because it's running Cinema 4D kind of in the background there. And so let me show you exactly how we can set that up so that we can make changes inside of Unreal and not have to go back and forth between Cinema 4D and Unreal engine so again you just want to make sure cinemaware for unreal and cinema 4d data smith importer is enabled which it is and then another way you can find that plugins folder if you're not familiar you just come up to settings and you would just come down here to plugins as well and then down here in the lower right I'm just going to hit update project file which that always comes up and so now we have unreal engine all set to go and let's get something really simple set up here so let me actually find a text tool which will be right here under my cloner. I'm going to click on text. I'm just going to set up some real simple text. Let's just do Winbush. Maybe let's find a different font. Maybe let's see what this Roboto Black, something like that. I can actually capitalize my name there. There we go. And then maybe let's align it to the middle. I'm not going to do anything too crazy for this example. Let's add a camera in here like so. Let's center it up. So I just came over to my coordinates, zeroed everything out. 
I could probably lower this down a little bit like that. And then let's add a MoGraph cloner in this example as well. So I'm just gonna start maybe with like a cube, come in, just drop a cube in here. Maybe let's make this a little bit smaller, like all 100s all around. And then I'm gonna come over, drop a simple cloner in here. I could probably use a grid. Let's maybe make this two by two. So three by two by two, something like that. And then let me drag it behind the text here. So let's say that we wanted to create something like we're working in like a broadcast show and we need to make some lower thirds. So this is like a real simple setup for something like that. So let me actually add maybe a few more cubes in here like that. And then I could just add like a random effector in there just to randomize it a little bit. So if I come up to MoGraph, come down to effectors, just randomize it, something like that. And there we go. So now we have a lower third, let's say for like a TV show or something like that where we have the name in the front, then we have like a bar that's behind it. We can actually add some materials if you want. So just double click down here. I'm gonna remove this reflectance and add a GGX at like 1%. That usually looks good when we bring it into Unreal Engine. And then let's say we wanna make this blue. So I'm just gonna make the text blue. And let's say I wanna make a copy down here. So I just held down the left control, just left click and drag my material down here. And let's say I wanna make this one, maybe like a light blue or something for like the blocks behind the text. So something like that, something really easy, something cool there. So we have the name, we have like a lower third bar behind there. And let's say we wanna bring this into Unreal Engine. And if anybody's ever worked on any TV show, you know, you start off with like one name and then you need to maybe make a couple iterations of it. And so we could start off with Winbush and then we could change it to EJ, then we could change it to Maxon, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But previously you had to keep coming back to Cinema 4D and then you know, updating it in Cinema 4D and then go to Unreal Engine and re-import it. But with this latest update, we can actually make the changes all inside of Unreal Engine so we don't have to go back and forth. And to get this all acclimated, we actually wanna use the take system of Cinema 4D so we can select which attributes we wanna change once we're inside of Unreal Engine, which is really cool. You can select the ones that you only wanna change and that's it. So if I come over here on my right hand side where it says takes, and I'm actually gonna right click and undock it just so we can see how the take system is working while I'm making all these attribute changes. So I'm just gonna dock it to the side here. So we have our objects panel still here and then we have our takes panel still here. So the first thing we wanna do is actually hit the plus button here and that's gonna make a new take right here. And then once you have your take selected, you wanna make sure that this little square is selected for your new take. If I come over here to text and let me actually drag my attributes window up but now you can see everything is grayed out. We can't make any changes at all. And a way to get that activated is actually just right click. And then you wanna come down to override and that's gonna activate it there. So you can make your changes in here. Let's say we wanna make our, our depth change there like 30. And then also when you have the override activated in here, these are the attributes that you're telling Unreal Engine that you wanna be able to change in engine. And so it's really important to make all those changes here first inside your take system. So let's say for my text, I wanna be able to change my text out in Unreal Engine. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select override for that. And then let's say maybe I wanna do like my horizontal, you know, for my kerning and stuff like that. So I'm gonna override. You can always, you can change it here as well. But let's say I wanna make it five, something like that. And then also for my cloner, you can override some of this stuff as well. So let's say if I wanna change like the spacing, I'm just gonna click on size, right click on that hit override and then you could change this all inside of unreal engine and let's say we want to override the fillet and then the fillet radius because maybe we want to change that inside of unreal as well and there we go so i think you guys get the point so let's say that that's all the attributes that we want to be able to change in unreal and we're happy with everything that we're selected so no longer do we have to save this project out for cinemaware we could just save a straight cinema 4d project which is major because before when we had to save it out for Cineware, depending on your scene, your scenes could get really, really large. But now we could just take a native Cinema 4D file into Unreal Engine. And so I'm just gonna come up the file, come down to save my project. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna name this text example and click save. 
And that's basically it. So now we're just saving out a Cinema 4D project as we normally do. And now we're going to jump into Unreal Engine and bring everything in. So let me come back to Unreal Engine now. So I'm in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is probably delete some of this stuff. So I'm going to delete the floor plane, delete my player start, and maybe even my sky sphere. Yeah, I'm just going to have it black like that. So I'm going to delete my atmospheric fog. And I'm just going to leave those three things in here. So what I'm going to do now is come up to my data smith, click on this, and then I'm going to go to my desktop where I saved my Cinema 4D project, my UE folder, my text example right here, click open. And then under my content folder, I'm just going to click OK. And then I'm just going to import everything here. Just leave everything checked marked, hit import. You can see now we have our Cinema 4D icon here, which is Cineware working inside of Unreal Engine, which is really cool. So let me come over here to perspective. Just gonna look through my camera lens. There we have my name. We have the blocks there in the background. So let's say that, you know, we're working at a network. We need to change this out. No longer say Winbush. We want it to say Maxon now. And so in order to do that, we're gonna come down to the Cinema 4D icon, double click on it, and it brings up this new attribute window. So now if you look inside the input parameters, you can see that everything that we override it inside of the take menu is now selectable here. So our clone size, we change the depth. So maybe let's say we want to do something crazy like 75. And then we want the text name to change out to max on there. And then maybe our spacing, we can space it in a little bit. Maybe let's turn it in by two. And then for like our, our cloner for lay right back there, let's do something like five. And so we're not seeing the changes happen in real time inside of our viewport there. We have to click this re-import button right here. And then it's just going to come up with this menu again. So you can select the stuff that you only want to change out. But we already made our selections here. So I'm just going to leave everything as is and click import. And now we can see Cinema 4D, the Cineware plugin working within side of Unreal Engine, which now we have the max on here. We, you can see like our cubes are a little bit more smoother there. Our depth has changed and everything as well. And so we just made a change from Cinema 4D without going to Cinema 4D inside of Unreal Engine. So let's say that you went a little bit crazy and you just want to reset back to like the default that you made originally in Cinema 4D. It's easy to go back as well. All I'm going to do is basically come right here and we see our text example box. I'm going to right click on this, click re-import. And then I'm just going to import again. And this is just going to reset everything back to default. So it should say Winbush. There we go. We have our original depth and everything. And then you can kind of just go back and forth and you can render this out, make your changes, render that out, and you should be good to go. And so that's the big update with Cinema 4D and Unreal Engine now, which is really cool. If you're familiar with the take system inside of Cinema 4D, this is a very powerful integration that they brought together. And so I would say play around with it and see what you come up with. So once again, shout out to the Maxon team. I've been helping beta test this for a couple of months now, I think since like last July. And so this is cool. To to see this coming to fruition i can't wait to see how everybody in the community kind of takes to this this is one more step forward integrating cinema 40 into unreal engine and so if you're feeling this update make sure you leave me a comment down below subscribe to the channel if you're new leave me a big thumbs up if you're digging the video and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you guys in the next video i see you soon take care what up what up Wimbush here